That 90s show is the most recent and perhaps one of the most relevant of the current wave of TV show revivals. A sequel series to the famous 2000 sitcom That 70s Show and nothing else. Like many of you, I was a huge fan of That 70s Show growing up, despite not actually being alive in the 70s. Which is strange, isn't it? You would think that a show that leans so heavily into the time period of the 1970s would be most appealing to those who actually live through it, but that just wasn't the case. Sure, the show used the time period as a way of extracting jokes from, but it was never totally reliant on it. Every episode wasn't just, woohoo, we're in the 70s, isn't that funny? Remember disco? Remember bell bottoms? Remember bowl cuts? Well, I guess there actually was a bit of that, but the point is, despite the outwardly nostalgic angle of the show, it was never bogged down in it and mostly told stories absent of the time period it was set in. Now, much of that is the same in that 90s show. To the show's credit, it isn't the embarrassing 90s nostalgia fest I was worried it would be. In fact, I would even go so far as to say that it hardly takes any advantage of the time period it's set in, especially for a show called That 90s Show. But this video is about nostalgia, right? So if we aren't talking about 90s nostalgia, then what are we talking about? So yeah, the kind of nostalgia we are dealing with here isn't your average everyday garden variety type. It's a show that has nostalgia not for the time period it takes place in, but for itself, which as a concept embodies so much about the time we are currently living in. I'll get back to this in a minute, but first let's talk about the usual kind of nostalgia. For years now, it feels like we have been put through the ringer with 80s nostalgia. Everything from neon lights and synthwave music, to the kids on bikes in Stranger Things, to the cultural apocalypse that is Ready Player One. No matter what entertainment you consume, you will see some version of this. Sure, the 80s may be the current trend, but that is just because many of the people currently making entertainment grew up in that time period. And no matter how good or bad a given time period may be, those who grew up in it will always have a level of romanticism attached to it. It's inescapable. Right now, it's the 80s. Back when That 70s Show was first coming out, it was, you guessed it, the 70s. Before that, it was the 60s. And I'm sure you can take it from there. This is all to be expected. There's a saying in writing called, write what you know, which means just that. Now, this mainly refers to emotions and feelings that you yourself are familiar with, but this also applies to more tangible things like, for example, the time you grew up in. So as annoying as it is that previous time periods will be milked for content forever, it's not something we can really get rid of. What we can control, however, is how we tell those stories. For example, one of the many pitfalls of setting a story in an old, nostalgic time period is portraying it in an inauthentic way by smoothing out the rough edges and taking out any unsavory parts. We can see this in how lots of people romanticize the 1950s as this supposedly innocent time where they were like cool greasers and doo-wop gangs like in Greece, but in reality, things were a lot more like the harsh, depressing life portrayed in Stand By Me. It's one of the reasons why I love things like Stand By Me and Twin Peaks so much. It rips off the nostalgic veil of small town America and shows how ugly life really is no matter how simple and charming it may seem on the outside. Stories like those make you want to go forward instead of clinging to a past that really didn't exist the way you think it did. Now, everything I have just said applies more to the usual kind of nostalgia that we are used to seeing, and tons of people have talked about that in great lengths far more effectively than myself. But the type of nostalgia that is on display in things like That 90s Show is somehow even more hollow and vapid than something like Stranger Things, and is really symbolic of what we are dealing with right now. Nostalgia for nostalgia's sake. 
Things like Stranger Things catch a lot of flack for being nostalgia bait, and that is true in some respects. Parts of that show do sometimes feel like they are just shamelessly trying to remind you of the 80s, and a lot of the plots are cherry-picked from 80s films and TV shows, but that's just a backdrop. The story and characters themselves are original. It might not be 100% original, but it's still its own thing. I mean, Quentin Tarantino has made an entire career doing this. He openly steals concepts from old movies, but he gets away with it by making it his own. It's the difference between inspiration and literally just a one-to-one -one copy. But that 90s show is just that. Instead of selling a product that reminds you of a certain time period from the past, the idea of nostalgia itself is the product. The nostalgia element of that 90s show is totally divorced from the supposed 90s era and focused entirely on things we know from that 70s show. Sure we have these new kids that are growing up in the 90s, but pff, who cares about them? We got Tommy Chong back. We got Jim Rash back. Remember them? The first episode of the show is about as effective of a thesis on this idea as you can possibly have. We see Kitty in red, and everyone claps and cheers. Oh look, he's still an old curmudgeon, and she is still wacky and cook stuff. Next scene, look, it's Eric and Donna. They are still just the same as always. Eric likes Star Wars. Did you know he likes Star Wars? And look, Donna is still big and strong. Good old Donna. There's the basement, and Donna's old house, and the Vista Cruiser. Absolutely nothing has changed. Oh and look, it's Kelso and Jackie. They are just the same as they always were. Now throw in a few laugh tracks and bing bang boom, we got ourselves an episode. And that is basically the whole show. Now, technically speaking, it's not like the worst thing ever. The show is well produced, decently acted, and not horribly written, but there is nothing about it that feels genuine. The only reason I even remember what I do about the show is because I'm making a video on it and I have gone through the show a few times while taking notes. But if I were to watch this casually, it would be in one ear out the other. Every other plot or joke in the show is set up with the intent of reminding you of that 70s show. Like the subplot with the neighbor that wants to break up with her boyfriend is set up with the payoff being that the boyfriend is Fez. That's the joke, because we know him. It's that shallow. I have a hard time even calling it a real show on its own because when I try to think about it, all I get are memories of the old show. It's just like Ready Player One where they just throw reference after reference after reference at you until you get subdued into a vegetable state that can only be creatively satisfied by something you recognize. That kind of storytelling, if you can even call it that, is quickly becoming the new normal for nostalgia-driven projects. No longer do we want to merely have an original story that borrows from the past or is set in a different time period. Now we literally just want the exact same thing again. We want Red and Kitty and Eric and Donna and Kelso and Jackie and Not You and Fez and we want them to be exactly the same as they were the last time we saw them because that makes us feel comfortable. Say what you will about something like that 80s show, but at least that merely borrows the idea of a sitcom set in a retro era. It's not 100% reliant on the sister show to have a plot like that 90s show is. Take away the old characters and images from the original show, and what do you have? Just a standard, run-of-the-mill teen sitcom that has totally more in common to a Disney Channel series than the original show, and has absolutely no voice of its own. It's not just that it's nostalgic, it's the celebration of nostalgia itself. The idea that we can't let anything die, and that there is somehow value in being able to just recognize things. It's the absolute antithesis of creativity, and unlike the usual brand of nostalgia that is present in every generation, at least in some capacity, this new wave is unique to right now. What I find so interesting about it is how it keeps evolving. 
A few years ago, there was a lot of buzz about reviving old shows like Roseanne and Will and Grace, but that was just doing more seasons of the same old show. But now, it's taken a step further by reviving old kid shows targeted at the now adults that grew up with them. Perfect example of this is the new iCarly. Much like that 90s show, it isn't like horrible, but it only exists to make people between the ages of 22 to 30 go, oh my god, iCarly is back. Instead of taking inspiration from the old material and using it to create something new, they literally just do the same thing again, except they're older now. It's actually kind of sad. It's the TV show equivalent of refusing to grow up. No, I won't put away my old toys. I want to play with iCarly in that 70s show forever. And sure, right now, these shows and actors are only like 10, 15, 20 years older than the last time, so it's not that crazy. But how far are we going to push this? Are we going to keep rebooting the same shows endlessly? Are we going to have that 2000 show, that 2010 show, that 2020 show? Is iCarly going to be doing a web series at the age of 75? Maybe. But don't we want new things? After all, that's how we have all these ongoing franchises in the first place. They were once original. At some point, someone had to take a leap of faith and create something that had a risk of not sticking. And don't get me wrong, there is still plenty of great original content being created or adapted these days, but the rate of franchise milking is going up dramatically. Like, it's one thing to milk something like Star Wars. I mean, how many of us would be able to leave a cash cow like that alone if we owned it? But when it gets to the point of rebooting old shows that have, at this point, completely outdated formulas, then creativity truly is dead. You can't make modern comedy shows that are still shot this way and use laugh tracks and expect to make any waves with current audiences. Like, come on, the laugh track has been on its way out for a long time now. Bazinga. But that's just the thing. The show isn't trying to do anything original or even capture a new audience. They don't expect people to watch this that haven't seen that 70s show. The only thing Netflix wants out of this show is for people to see that title they recognize, click on it, see Red and Kitty, feel that three second burst of dopamine, and then who cares? Just fall asleep on your couch while the rest of the episodes play. They don't care if you like it or if it tries to be innovative or edgy or really anything. It might literally be the least inspired thing I have ever seen in my life. At least with Star Wars, there are some genuinely talented people working to make quality content. Sure, it may be in the service of a company that doesn't care if it's good or not, but we still manage to get things like The Mandalorian and Andor every once in a while. The people who made those shows had a vision for a story that could have worked with or without the Star Wars IP. But that 90s show is just empty. I'm sure you've noticed that I haven't talked much about the actual plot or characters in the show, and that's not because I didn't want to. When I marked this show on my calendar earlier this month as a potential video, I was expecting to make a regular review, but it's pretty much impossible to do that. Like I already said, nothing is horrible in regard to performances or production. It's just beyond generic. Even though I went through the show twice and took notes, I genuinely can't recall a single plot point. I don't even know most of the characters' names. If I had like one critique aside from the nostalgia and lack of inspiration, it would be that the new kids just can't stack up to the old cast. A few of them feel like characters straight out of a mid-2000s Disney Channel show where everyone is overacting and like throwing their hands in the air and like yelling all the time. Seriously, Gwen, I almost nicked my nerves. This whiny vagina music is bumming me out. It actually made me really confused because it had been a bit since I last watched that 70s show and I was thinking, was the original cast like this? Was it this kitty? So I watched an episode or two, and no, they weren't. 
This fact makes it even weirder when you contrast the new cast to the old cast because they just don't mesh at all. One scene will be some super sexual plot with Fez and his girlfriend, and the next scene will be this wacky Disney Channel-esque scenario with the kids, and it feels like you just change shows out of nowhere. It's really weird. If you ask me, if this show has to exist, they should have done it one of two ways. One, you don't even bother with this new generation and just make it about the old cast, and instead of it being a teen comedy, make it about all of them as adults. You could even have the same catalyst of Eric and Donna coming back to visit Point Place for the summer. Clearly this was an option since they managed to get everyone that wasn't either dead or evil to come back so that would work. The other option and the one I would prefer would be if you actually made an original That 90 show totally divorced from the original series. Have new characters, a new setting, make it actually look like the 90s. One of the things that I hate about the way they did this show was that they used the same locations and styles as the original series so nothing about it seems like the 90s. They do the weed circle and are still in the same basement that looks like it's from the 70s and drop the same old references they always did. They even drive the same 70s era car. Outside of a few of their outfits, nothing really screams 90s. In fact, if I were to show someone this and ask them what time period this is, they might say 70s, 80s, even 2000s. It has no stamp of its own. So just set the show somewhere else and start from scratch. You can even use the same kids if you want to, just don't make them the spawn of the old characters. But no, instead we got the worst of both worlds. Bottom line, it's just not a very good show. I am however very interested to see how long this type of nostalgia driven reboot model will last. Because even if you can drag it out for a very long time, eventually the well will run dry. Not to sound too morbid, but eventually the people in these shows will grow old and die, and you can no longer have Kurtwood Smith say, How'd you like to own a little bit of my foot in your ass? Sooner or later, the proverbial snake will start to eat itself, because any type of content that is based on past material will eventually use all of it up. Some franchises may take longer to reach that point than others, but the end is inevitable. I can only hope I will be around to see that day come.